crushed. And, and now we, we turn to our, our good friend in Beijing, uh, Wang Jisi. Uh, thank you very much, Doc. Could you hear me? Yes, yeah. very well. Okay. Uh, I apologize for not being able to take the conference in person uh, because of the COVID regulations in Beijing. Uh, I actually, I just returned to Beijing from Berlin, and I talked to a number of German officials and scholars there, so I could even pr pr <coughs> pr uh, provide a German perspective on this picture. <laughs> Uh, the Europeans continue to be strongly interested in trading with and investing in China. Uh, uh, Chancellor Schulz went to Beijing last month, and Charles Michel, the European Council <coughs> President, was in Beijing in early December. They will be followed probably by President Macron of France. So Beijing is very happy with all these visits. <coughs> But in Berlin, some business leaders told me that their commercial interests in China have met with public opinion polls and media reports in Germany that are increasingly negative about China. And the Chancellor Schultz's visit to Beijing was somewhat controversial because of in Germany. He belongs to one party. And the foreign minister and his father of another the Green Party. So there have some uh, uh, problems there. And I also heard in Germany uh, the draft of Germany's first China strategy report was leaked to the press last month. Mm -hmm. And the German foreign ministry, under political pressure from home, has to modify it to appear somewhat more hawkish toward China. I hope that is not the case, but I'm not sure. Some officials said to me that Germany will increase its military budget, be closer to the United States in geopolitical mm -hmm. terms, and try to strengthen NATO. And Europeans and Americans hold similar views on China in ideological terms, being critical of China's human rights and some other domestic policies. So on the one hand, Europe will keep its strategic autonomy, especially in the economic and the technological dimensions in dealing with China. Climate change is another dimension for China and Europe to work together. On the other hand, the EU and Britain will lean to the US as far as geopolitics and ideology are concerned. I want to mention the recent visit by Xi Jinping to Saudi Arabia. I think it is not simply a bilateral visit. Xi Jinping joined Arab leaders in the first China-Arab States Summit and China GCC Summit. So I think China has more ambitions uh, than simply bilateral relations with Arab countries. It is trying to establish a one to multiple platform with Arab countries and uh, the countries in the region as a whole. And the Chinese say that we are more open, we are more inclusive. Uh, they are comparing uh, their uh, scheme with American, uh, some American projects. For instance, Americans have uh, I2, U2 mechanism, that is India, uh, Israel, uh, United States, and UAE. China says that we should be more inclusive. Our platform can include the United States, the European countries, Russia, India, everybody. And we are open uh, to include them in uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization or BRICS. Uh, so probably we'll see a more proactive Chinese approach to the Middle East and to the third world countries at large. Now a few things about Taiwan. I agree some other, with some others that a massive military action or a full-scale military takeover of Taiwan is not likely in any foreseeable future. 
the reference to Taiwan in the 20th Party Congress is milder than most observers expected. They are, uh, the, the report com, com, uh, continues to emphasize peaceful unification and the one country, two system, despite the uproars we often hear from some more militant, uh, uh, militant and belligerent uh, vo uh, nationalistic voices in social media. And my, I think China's top priorities at this moment are not Taiwan. They are two, twofold. First, uh, Omicron or COVID. Beijing's COVID policy changed dramatically since last week. And people in Beijing, like myself, are perplexed to see confusing and conflicting regulations and signals announced by the government. Infection cases are surging alarmingly in my neighborhood and in the whole city of Beijing. Unless and until we successfully deal with this problem, we are not ready to focus on Taiwan. It's hard to imagine that the PLA soldiers landing on Taiwan have to wear masks. <laughs> Second, the economy. The economic growth is low, record low this year, and unemployment is terribly high. I don't uh, want to uh, expand that because there are more, many media reports on, on China's economy. This is why I think Taiwan is not high on Beijing's political agenda. Uh, and recently, Xi Jinping met with Biden uh, in Bali, Indonesia, and their summit went quite well, and they, uh, they achieved the, uh, the agreement that they don't want to fight each other, with each other. And Biden went back saying that he doesn't see uh, the immediate uh, conflict over Taiwan. That is a good sign. However, we in China have to worry about two things on Taiwan. First, U.S. approach to Taiwan is moving from assuring Beijing that Washington will stick to its one China policy to, to assuring Taipei that it will be given more assistance to the island's uh, defense. Uh, we are see increased danger that one day Washington would give up this one China policy and instead recognize an independent Taiwan. I'm not thinking this as a, a, a reality, but there are fears in China this way. Nancy Pelosi's visit to t Taiwan triggered a major military crisis and political crisis. Kevin McCarthy, the perspective a prospective House Speaker in the United States announced he would lead a large congressional delegation to Taiwan early in 2023. If that happened, Beijing would have to would have no choice but to respond with more decisive military moves, which could result in an uncontrollable confrontation. The second hidden danger is Taiwan's internal politics. The opposition party, KM, K the KMT, won more seats in the last election. But even the KMT would not support, Taiwan, uh, Ta support unification with the mainland. I hope that Paul will say more about Taiwan's <laughs> internal politics because he knows a great deal. Uh, that is what I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesus. Uh, you've given us a, a very concise uh, tour of the horizon on Chinese policy toward uh, Europe, Taiwan, and uh, foreign policy generally and domestic politics. Uh,